This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 293 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by EcoGold. You can visit them at ecogold.ca. Enjoy today's tip. Hi, everybody. Glenn the Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Well, we have back with us today Shauna Koresh. We've had her on in the last couple of weeks, and she obviously is known as the Clicker Lady. She uh, is involved with clicker training, and many years ago started the training method called On Target Training, used by professionals and Olympic caliber riders as well as amateur riders. It's a reward reinforcement training system that dramatically accelerates the training process for any breed or discipline. And she does a great job with it. And she was really the leader of this back quite a while ago now and sold many books and many clickers because of her training system. And my wife and I use it as well. And we we believe in it and it really does work. So that's why we were thrilled when we could get Shauna back on with us. And we're going to be back with Shauna in just one minute with her tip of the day. But first, I would like to speak to you about a company that's going to be actively involved in the World Equestrian Games coming up here next week. And one of the way the way that they're involved is not that they're going to be here in person selling stuff. It's that because uh, many of the riders that are participating in the World Equestrian Games are using their products. That's Philip Dutton, McLean Ward, Karen O'Connor, Boyd Martin, Jessica Phoenix all use their high-performance saddle pads and horse boots. And that's because they're non-slip, they're 100% breathable, and the ultimate in comfort or protection for your horse. Take it from me, when you're looking to buy a saddle pad, when you're looking to buy a horse boot next time, check out Eco Gold first. They may not be the most inexpensive pads and boots out there, but they're the top quality made with high-tech materials and a state-of-the-art design. There's a reason that riders like Karen O'Connor and Boyd Martin, Jessica Phoenix, all of them use EcoGold products is because they work. Check them out at ecogold.com. Their website is cool. It's broken down. You can take a look by your discipline. You can take a look by the type of pad. Whatever, However you want to do it, you can do it on their website. And they have a lot of good information on there. And they also have a lot of good testimonials. And I know that they're good folks up there. And they're going to be rooting for their riders here at the World Equestrian Games. If you haven't yet... Go to EcoGold, E-C-O-G-O-L-D dot com and check them out and, and buy your next saddle pad, horse boot, or any of their other products from EcoGold and you will not regret it. That's EcoGold.ca. And now on to Shauna Koresh. Well, hi, Shauna, and welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. Well, hi, Glenn. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here. I want to remind everybody, if they missed your first tip, they can go back to Horse Tip Daily and just search your name. on the. There's a drop-down menu of all the experts on the left side of the page. Just search up Shauna Koresh, and you'll find all of her tips in a row. So you can go back and listen if you missed her first one and uh, missed hearing all about her work with, with all kinds of critters. And I got to tell you, You know, we're talking about, obviously, you're the on-target training girl, um, and have been known that for many, many years. Um, But you have something on your Facebook page, and I want to encourage people that they can go on Facebook and find you just by searching Ask Shauna. And you have something here. You've said, I've seen target-trained lions, tigers, hyenas, meerkats, hippos, rhinos, elephants, sharks, and now the one that fascinated me the most of all of those was goldfish. So, <laughs> you know, I have never been able to train my goldfish, to be honest with you. But ne- I've seen uh, two different trained goldfish. One could swim through a hoop, you know, so they put like a little hoop in the bowl. And then the other would come up out of the water slightly to touch their, their finger to get food. So, yeah, they are, you can train anything. <laughs> so, it's a, you totally, totally can train them. Does now, it, are they going to be complex thought? Mm, not so much. But they can train, you can teach them basic things, so for sure. Does a clicker work underwater? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when I was at SeaWorld, we actually used, uh, we had dog whistles, and they're high-pitched whistles. And we would we could blow those underwater, and they would hear them underwater. Oh wow! Well, I guess that's how yeah. they communicate is with those high pitched sounds. Anyway, the whales and things. So, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I'm not too sure about my goldfish. I think they just poop and eat. I think that's pretty <laughs> much it. 
If that's considered trained, then I have the best trained goldfish in the country. <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, I just go with, if I'm doing a clinic and everything's gone wrong and they're smelling, you know, something they shouldn't, you know, you're just like, okay, smell that horse, you know, and act like that's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how are we going to, what are we talking about today? Well, today I just kind of wanted to point out something that is, one of the, the things I try to think about in every single session I do, so that's what I thought I'd share for today, and that is to set your horse up for success or, or set yourself up for success. So what, I, I mean, that seems fairly obvious as you think about it, but basically what, what I want to do, like if I'm training, I want to do whatever I can to get something worth reinforcing. Again, I'm positive reinforcement-based training, and that doesn't mean I don't use traditional horse training, but I, I'm adding in the positive reinforcement. That's the part of the equation that's comes from sea world, it's a little different. But I need to set my horse up for success so I can get something worth reinforcing. So I try to think of each and every um, scenario, like, okay, so let's say I'm training a horse to, to stand still for clippers. And so what I'm going to realize is I need a horse to stand still. So is it going to be best to do it when he, before he gets turned out or the time he's normally turned out or when everybody else is getting fed? No, I realize what I want with that behavior, I want a quiet behavior. I want my horse to have burnt off all his extra energy. So one of the things I could do to set him up for success is to make sure that he gets turned out or he gets plunged or exercised or something, and, and I'm going to do it at the place where I feel like he's going to have the most success. So I want to burn off that extra energy. So if I'm working on a quiet behavior, I'm going to have a more quiet horse. And then I also try to think about... Um, like places that, you know, maybe it's not best to do it right next to the horse who we always, you know, fights with or plays with, but maybe it's best to do it in the cross ties, or maybe he already has problems in the cross ties and it's best to do it in a stall, or whatever it might be where I could set him up for success. So those are things I try to think about in each and every training session. So I think that that's, sometimes we take it where it is, but if you can do those things, it will help you to get a better behavior, and the more they get to rehearse the correct thing, the more you're going to see the correct thing, and the more I get a chance to reward it, and I've just increased the likelihood of seeing it again. Now, on the opposite side of that coin, let's say I want a horse when working on upward transition. You know, he's, he, he, he's not so good at his canter to part, let's say, or, or whatever it might be. And so in that situation, I want that horse to have all that energy, so I may not turn him out for the day and come out a little bit later and ride him when I have more energy, which is going to to add to what my target behavior is. So, in, and again, I'll still try to think about going to the place where he tends to be the best, you know, and, uh, you know, if he's better in one ring or a better place, but I'll, I'll utilize that energy. So if you can just think about those things for all of your behaviors, it can help set you up to succeed. It can help your, set your horse up to succeed. And as we use these tools right out of the chute, um, down the road, while at first maybe I only t work on clipping my horse after he's been turned out and it's in the afternoon in his stall, let's say, you know, whatever has worked and I've had success, pretty soon you need to start saying, but now I need to be able to clip you anytime, anywhere, whether you're fresh, whether you're quiet. So then you start um, backing away from those things. But only once I've kind of established the correct behavior and I know he's capable of it. Yeah, that makes a lot of so, sense. <clears throat> it does make a lot of sense. And, you know, sometimes we just think about what's convenient for us. Rather than what's what's going to, uh, as you said, set the horse up for success, rather than just thinking about, oh, this is when I have time. Exactly, and then we end up making a mountain out of a molehill. Sometimes, you know, you've now you've gone down this road, and now you're committed. <laughs> you right, know? right. And fighting, it's a battle, and the more we get them battling and saying no, the more they will say no. So it's it's been proven that the more they rehearse the behavior, the stronger it is in their repertoire. So. It just takes more to rebalance those scales and to get them back in, in, you know, back and lined up and get more reinforcement on the other side. So, so it's so using those things and and putting that extra time in. Sometimes I like to say to slow down, you'll go faster. And that's right. one of those things where it's like slow down, take the time, do what you can to make it work, and in the long run, it's going to move along so much faster. All right, great. Well, that that's a terrific tip. And I'll tell people where they can find out about you. Um, if you go to shawnacarish.com, um, and that's uh, K-A-R-R-A-S-C-H, or um, on-target training with hyphens in there, 
Um, or you can just go Google Shauna Horse Trainer, and, and you'll probably bring it up. Or you can go to your training kit. Yeah, we can so. go to Horse t- uh, Tip Daily, and you also find links to her website. And she also, as I mentioned, has a Facebook uh, page. You can hop, hop on over to Facebook and just type in Ask Shauna, and you, you'll bring up her fan page and become a fan there, along with 1,600 other people. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, we, yeah. we appreciate you being on, and we'll talk again soon. Sounds great, Glenn. Thank you. Thanks again to Shauna. We really appreciate her taking time out of her busy schedule to stop in and share tips with us. And this, these are things that she does in clinics around the world, and she gives to you for free right here at Horse Tip Daily, and we do appreciate that. Don't forget to check out all the other shows on the network at horseradionetwork.com. And starting next week, we have our coverage of the World Equestrian Games in full tilt. So check out all the details at horseradionetwork.com. And until then, have a safe ride, everybody, and we'll be back tomorrow with another new expert and another new horse tip. (laughs) 